you will be telling me something about the history of banjo. Dr. Harold Melvin. Thank you. I, I will keep this short. Uh, I would first like to thank uh, Nakagawa-san, who came and visited Ustad Subsil at his home some weeks ago and helped raise his profile with the uh, Japanese diplomatic circle here in Pakistan. Uh, my name is Aaron Mulvaney. I have been a student of Ustad Subsil for eight years. Uh, this instrument that we're playing here, the banjo, has very interesting connections with Japan, which I would like to outline very quickly. Uh, this instrument in its current form was invented in the period of 1919. Uh, in about 1912, uh, Morita Goro, after spending two years traveling in Europe and the United States, uh, invented an instrument called the Taisho Goto, which, uh, as, which as far as my research has uncovered, he developed on the basis of a Japanese transverse zither called the Niken Gen, uh, which he then attached a typewriter-like mechanism uh, to the strings in order to actuate the, the, the different notes. Now this instrument was kind of a toy, kind of a hobby, but it was very small, it was very easy to carry. I'll speak up. It was very small, it was very easy to carry, and it made its way into the Gulf, into, into uh, the, the Gulf area. Uh, Ustad Sabso's great, great uncle, Nahuda Muhammad, Captain Muhammad, was a sailor, a merchant marine, who traveled from Karachi to Basra to Calicut and then back to Karachi. And one year, on his, sometime around 1919, he was traveling to Basra and he saw someone in the streets playing this small little instrument. And he thought that he would take it home for his son, Mara. So he offered some money, he took this instrument home, he offered it to his son, his son had no interest, and so he left it in a corner. Uh, Ustad Sabso's great uncle, Gul Muhammad, was visiting his uncle, Nahuda Muhammad one day, he saw this instrument, he, was a, he himself was a very accomplished musician, a harmonium player and a rabab player, and he asked if he could take this instrument home. He took this instrument home, uh, the small thing, about 60 centimeters long, about 15 centimeters wide, and he extended it. He made it about a meter long, and he made it about 30 centimeters wide, and he added some extra strings, and he sat there with it and his rabab, and he marked where all of the different notes were and he developed this larger instrument with two and a half octaves, and he started playing it, and he taught his youngest brother, Khalik Dad. Uh, now, Khalik Dad was uh, also a very good musician. He played rabab, he played harmonium, he played sitar. And in 1935, he was introduced by Gul Muhammad to the great Mian Mubarak Ali Khan of the Gwalior Gharana, who had settled in Karachi in the 1930s. And Mian Mubarak Ali Khan encouraged Khalik Dad to play the banjo, saying that there were already too many sitar players in Karachi and that the banjo was an interesting instrument that would bring him work and it would bring him fame because nobody else played this. And so over the duration of the rest of his life from 1935 until 1983 or so, he developed this instrument into a classical instrument. He developed his, his gharana is the only uh, tradition in the world that plays the banjo in the classical style. Now, this instrument has come to great fame in Pakistan as a folk instrument. Uh, Faiz Mohammed, uh, Bel uh, Belaval Belgium, um, Taj Mohammed Tajil have all, re have all gotten recognized with the presidential award as folk players. But this instrument and the Gharana of Ustad Sabsul, uh, which I have been studying with now for eight years, is in the unique position of being the only. So thank you for having us and I would like to have us play now. Hello. First of all, we are going to play the classical ragas, uh, Puriya Kalyan. I have a master uh, tabla player who received President Award, Ustad Bashir Khan Saab. <clears throat> and my uh, student, uh, Dr. Heron. <clears throat> 